It's time for the 1430 Connection on 1430 WNAV and 99.9 FM. Spotlighting news, newsmakers, and important community issues. Now, with this week's edition of the 1430 Connection, here is WNAV news anchor Donna Cole. Welcome to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. In the studio with me today is Marianne Gosnell. She's president of the Assistance League of the Chesapeake and Marie Bossy. She's program chair for the uniforms, uh, the Kids in Need program for Assistance League of the Chesapeake. Thank you both for joining me today. Thank you for having us. Let's talk about the history of the organization. There is a umbrella organization that is the Assistance League. Mm -hmm. And there are, um, Marianne, you can tell, tell us about that. Well, National Assistance League has 120 chapters across the United States and 22,000 members. And their uh, model is find programs that fit the needs of the community, Mm -hmm. but that benefit children and families and senior citizens. Uh, Assistance League of the Chesapeake. Marie, tell us how that started. Well, uh, in 2002, uh, gals came here from California, both who had been in chapters of Assistance League there, which is where it originally started. And uh, when they came here, the National Corporation asked them if they would be willing to start a chapter. And both of them agreed and worked together. And uh, for five years, we were a guild first, and that meant that we had to prove that we could be organizationally and structurally sound and financially sound so and then we became a chapter in 2006 we have grown uh, exponentially with members and with programs since then when did you start with the organization Uh, I actually started in 2006 just as as it was becoming a chapter and why I had just retired I had been uh, a nurse for practicing for 48 years Mm -hmm. and uh, decided, um, you know, that I needed to do something now that I was retiring. And two of my neighbors belonged and invited me to a a meeting. And I was just so impressed with the caring and commitment of the volunteers that belonged. And there were only about 35, 40 members then. And uh, 13 years you've been doing this. Yes. And before that, how many years as a nurse? Uh, 48. You have a need to help people, don't you? (laughs) I guess so. All right, Marianne, tell us how you became president. I've always been involved in volunteering in something or another, and my pet projects are children and literacy. Mm -hmm. So about four years ago, I met a woman who's a member, and she turned me on to it, and I said, this is what I want to do. I do other things in the community, but this is the one that is the closest to me. How fulfilling is it for both of you? Obviously, 13 years (laughs) of helping the community, Marie, it's pretty fulfilling. It's almost like a it's become almost like a full-time job her job is a big job yeah just a very big job and yours my job is a big job it's fulfilling because um the it's contagious the enthusiasm of the members just makes it's kind of like an assistance league high Mm -hmm. you just say i want to do it and i want to do more it seems like if you're a career, if you're a, a serial volunteer um, and have drawn that line saying I can't do any more, you need to uh, avoid the people that are working for the assistance league of the Chesapeake <laughs> because you're roped into it as soon as you hear the mission, which is tell me. Well, the mission is to improve the lives of people in our community. We do so. The national league has programs, mm-hmm. but the but the idea is that we take their programs and put a local spin on them. Mm-hmm. So other chapters have clothing programs for kids for schools but ours is based on uniforms because the title one schools around here the kids wear uniforms Uh so we just said okay we're going to do uniforms and then um when schools call us and say we need people to chaperone kids to uh their um flu shots Mm -hmm. or hearing tests we go okay we can do that whatever the needs are we just try to fill it the uniforms. You're looking for new new Absolutely. uniforms, funds for new uniforms. Correct. Tell me how that works. Okay. So what happens is we we do a lot of grant applications and uh, and we do fundraising within our own programs. Uh, but um, in when I took this over in 2011, uh, we were doing about 350 uniforms a year, and we were servicing two schools. Now we service seven schools. Seven schools. And we distributed 3,150 uniforms this past year. That's amazing. And so our goal for 
next school year is 3,500 schools. So, And how can people help with that? So we're always looking for donations. Um, we have partnerships with Old Navy and with um, some of the other vendors that we get through Assistance League. So we try to get the best pi price possible so mm -hmm. that we're not you know, spending a lot of money, but um, the value of uniform today is fifty dollars, and uh, so if somebody would like to donate uh, to purchase one uniform mm -hmm. or sponsor one uniform for a child, they can do that. They can go to our website, website. which is um, www.alchesapeake.org. Okay. And so they can donate and uh, one uniform, two uniforms, whatever they would like. Um, but we do a lot of grant applications and we kind of depend on that. Plus our membership alone supports the programs really well. And so we donate a lot of money as well as our our hours. Uh, but I have about 48 volunteers who participate in the uniform program. And we go to the schools, we measure the kids, and then we have a warehouse that the Board of Ed provides for us. And we keep all our supplies there, all of our inventory. And then we go to the warehouse and we pack all the uniforms wow. and we bag them. And Old Navy donates the bags that we give. And, and, and some personnel one, too. Yes, and they always volunteer. And uh, each bag has a label with the student's name on it, the school, and uh, what's inside. I'm, I'm blown away, this yeah. is amazing. I had no idea it was mm -hmm. this big and that the wear, yeah. Right, so they get khaki pants, navy blue shirt, polo shirts. They get a navy blue crew neck sweatshirt. They get underwear, socks, and then they get a bag of toiletries, which includes a toothbrush, toothpaste, soap, shampoo, and conditioner and all of those items are donated by pretty much our members there are members of the community that this is putting a real economic mm -hmm. hardship on to provide these uniforms Absolutely. and you're filling this void mm -hmm. we're going to take a short break we'll be right back on the 1430 connection Welcome back to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. In the studio with me is Mary Ann Gosnell, president of the Assistance League of the Chesapeake, and Marie Bossi. She's program chair for the Uniforms Program, or the Kids in Need Program of the Assistance League of the Chesapeake. And we just learned about the uniform needs for our community, and there are a lot of uniform needs. Uh, money is needed to help with that, and grants are given to help with that. But if you're listening and you are a provider of either donations or grants, they need Assistance League of the Chesapeake. Always needs help, yeah? Absolutely. We're always looking for sponsors or uh, companies or foundations who have grants that would be willing to support us. Um, so, yeah. The, uh, so that's one part of Operation School Bell, Kids in Need. Mm -hmm. There's a puppet show also that goes around, and I'm very into the idea of helping kids learn uh, not just when they're young about bullying, but as they get older, too. Tell, but, and you have a program about this. We do. We have uh, it's called Kids on the Block, and it's uh, um, a, we have two uh, teams uh, who go out to the schools. They do perform for the second and third graders in the elementary schools, and um, the and the schools don't have to be Title One like they do for kids in need. Mm -hmm. uh, so every elementary school has the opportunity to have them, and they do a skit uh, on bullying. And then there's questions and answers at the end. I and saw on the website over 20,000 area students have gotten to know Eddie, Claire, <laughs> Jennifer, Brenda, and Melody. And could you tell our listeners who Eddie, Claire, Jennifer, Brenda, and Melody are? Well, they are puppets, <laughs> and they each have uh, distinct personalities. Mm -hmm. Some of them wear glasses. Some of them might feel a little overweight. Some might have a learning difference. And mm -hmm. so the skit, the uh, script for the skit, addresses those differences and how each child can learn to deal with it and also deal with other kids' reactions to those differences. I, as we've discussed, we may end up having Eddie, Claire, Jennifer, Brenda, and Melody back for a visit here in the 
studio mm-hmm. so I can get to know them. Right. That would be That'd wonderful. That'd be fun. And they would love to perform. Okay, that's not the only thing you do on Kids in Need, right? There's some other things yeah, going on. Project Tell us, yeah, Project Literacy. We yeah, have, tell me. Um, at the schools, at two of the schools, we have uh, what we call a guest reader program, and uh, we have volunteers who go in, and they can go in, depending on the teacher's needs, once a week or once a month, and they read to the to the students. Um, there's also um, what's called the Chessy program, which is supporting the needs of kids to make sure that they not only can read, but they understand what they're reading. So, Which ap- is a big deal. It absolutely is. And that's and, at Mead Heights mm-hmm, Elementary mm-hmm. School. So the, you're not just located in Annapolis, you're all over the county. Correct. We we actually service um, Van Bocklin, Mead ha- uh, Elementary, and um, MacArthur Middle up mm-hmm. at Upper County. And then locally here in Annapolis, we serve uh, Georgetown East, Germantown, Tyler Heights, Mills Parole. So we have seven schools that we service at the moment. Do you, can you think of back on any success stories that really were meaningful for you something that somebody said to you that was it go ahead yeah we we have several um i i can think way back when we used to actually deliver the bags of uniforms to the kids and one of our volunteers uh said to one of the little fourth graders um would you like to see what's in the bag do you want me to open it for you right. and she said oh no she says i've got to bring it home like this because i've never gotten anything new before and i have to show my mm. mom and so it's it's stories like that that really kind of gets you and we've had grandparents who especially up at Van Bockel and Mead um, who are responsible for their grandkids because maybe the parents are on active duty or whatever um, and while they say they can't they send us thank you cards and they say well I can't give you money if you have a bake sale or something I I would love to beg for you and do something to show our appreciation mm-hmm. so there is there's lots of need and there's lots of people who are just willing to do things that can help in small ways and you need v- more volunteers always absolutely always need more volunteers we're always looking for new members who you are interested in getting into any of the programs that we provide because we certainly cover the spectrum we even have um we support the baltimore washington medical center uh, we have what's called stork's nest up there and so we have a, a, an annual baby shower and um all the members and friends of members you know donate clothing and we usually about what three to five thousand dollars a year uh that we support that program for the women that are having at babies risk, that are, that are, are at, at risk, risk. Mm-hmm. and one more time on the website marianne oh www.alchesapeake.org all right we're going to take a short break we'll be right back on the 1430 connection Welcome back to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. In the studio with me is Marianne Gosnell and Marie Bossy. They're both with the Assistance League of the Chesapeake. Marianne is the president. Marie is in charge of the uniform program, part of the Kids in Need program. What do you see as the future? What else do you want to add in? Well, we don't give uniforms to every kid in need okay. we can only we only have the funds to for many schools to just do part of the kids who qualify and i use the term qualify um kind of limited in that the counselors tell us who needs a uniform mm-hmm. we don't choose the kids so if we had more money we would provide uniforms to every child who needed them needed that assistance at our partner schools that would be one thing we also provide books to three schools Mm -hmm. we would every year at the end of the school year we give every child a book a paperback book for the lower grades and then the graduating fifth graders get a hardback book and we would probably take on more schools Mm -hmm. and give kids we know how important it is for everybody to have books at home and this could be the only book or one of the few books they own Uh and so we would give more books to more kids if we had more money and these are new books that you're brand getting. new books yeah. mm-hmm. yes and part of their summer reading program oh right. they are their part yes okay the schools dictate what the kids are supposed to read over the summer and this is one of those books right that's in, that's incredible and needed and yes. needed yeah definitely needed we can't say the website enough because people that are just tuning in now you have needs the assistance league of the chesapeake has needs again on the website alchesapeake.org to find out about volunteering to find out how you can help the organization with donations to help with grants etc 
at all their events. Are you outside in the community doing events so people can become aware of the organization? The next event we'll participate in is the first Sunday in Annapolis, uh-huh. uh, the one in October. Okay. And we will have a booth there. We don't know the number yet where our right. booth is, but um, we plan to have books that people walking by can buy a book for a kid that we'll then give to them during that what school year. What a great year. idea. And then we're also going to have a display of our uniforms. And we have little cards. We call them kin cards. Mm-hmm. And a person can purchase a kin card for $50, and that would pay for one uniform for one child. So they could do that in uh, as a birthday gift for someone or in honor of a relative or whatever. We would then know that at least one more child would have a uniform. Right. For people that are interested in volunteering, which it sounds like if you've passed by anybody that works for Assistance League of the Just Speak, <laughs> you've probably already been recruited and have worked as 13 years, 10 years, <laughs> two, two years. Yeah, for, exactly. Um, but what do you need specifically in volunteers? Where will they be put? I think the great thing about Assistance League of the Chesapeake is whatever your particular talent is, uh-huh. we have a need for it. Okay. So we need people in marketing communications who like to write and like to uh, write stories and take pictures and post on Facebook. We need people to do grant writing and fundraising for us. We need people who like to work in the classroom and who, who would be tutors mm-hmm. with little kids. We need sing-along people. We do these sing-alongs for seniors. Oh, yeah, seniors. we should talk. What are, what are the sing-alongs? So we go to, I don't know how many assisted we, living? Um, four. We go to um, Regency, um, uh, assisted living. When we go to Future Care Nursing Home, we go to Savona Park Assisted Living, um, and we go to uh, Spring Arbor. And we come in, and we bring, we have a somebody plays the piano, the drums, and we have singers, and we give them little song books, and they sing songs from their gen- their er- era. Right. So it could be uh, patriotic songs in the summer, uh, Christmas songs or holiday songs in December. It's so neat. And they're so cute. So the, the people there are so fun and they nice. Are. And we don't perform. What we want to do is get have that, they the sing. residents participate. Of these, yeah. Right. And sometimes, you know, some of the residents, maybe they They've had a stroke, they have speech problems, and they can't actually speak or, or sing, but they'll, you know, they'll be tapping their fingers and moving their feet, and so you know that they remember and their eyes light up, and it's just, it's amazing. You it's know? very sweet. And every once in a while, you'll get somebody who has just a magnificent voice, and we give them the <laughs> microphone. And, and it's like, wow, you know, we've made their day, their month, their It's pretty year. special. Yeah. Yeah. All right. One more time on the uh, website. ALChesapeake.org. Okay. What haven't I relayed that you would like to relay? That I wouldn't do what I do if I didn't enjoy the people that I do it with. We're, I mean, selfish for me to say, we're a really nice group of women (laughs) who are committed to just trying to make a small impact of change in our county. Men too, though, can Men can join. Yeah, They can. Yes. And, you know, we we do get our husbands to, you know, help with different things during the course of the year. We do have a fundraiser coming up in July on the 26th at Cafe Mezzanotti. And uh, so anybody who goes there from uh, five to nine, we will get a a percent of the proceeds. Uh, July 26th. Yeah, Cafe Mezzanote mm-hmm. and uh, Severna Park. Severna Park. Right. Yeah. From 5 to 9. Thank you both for joining me today. Thank you for uh, having thank us. Thank you for having and us and giving us this opportunity. Yeah, and for doing yeah. what you do. It's, yeah. kind of, it's so needed in the community. It's, yeah, it's fun. This is Donna Cole on the 1430 Connection. We'll see you next week.